Hej. in the unlikeliest of places, hope can still be found. Join us Monday as we celebrate the life of Queen Elizabeth II, her legacy and influence on pop culture. I really don't think it's something we'll see again in our lifetime. Nichelle? You're right, Kevin. Thank you so much. Okay, we're going to leave you now with a sneak peek at tonight's secret celebrity renovation on CBS with Super Bowl 56 champ and L.A. Ram star Aaron Donald. Happening now. The Fair County Elections Department opening up its doors today to both political parties and members of the media. What we saw inside and what both parties had to say. Here we go into the weekend, and I'll help you prepare weather wise, let you know how warm it's going to get, and if there's any hope for some rainfall, along with the latest track of Fiona. Coming up today at 5 o'clock, we're live in the Broncos for the big district showdown between the Canyon Cougars and the Champion Chargers. The news at 5 starts right now. We begin with late breaking news. A road rage incident escalating into a shooting with one person in the hospital and another on the run. Our John Paul Baraja spoke to San Antonio police about what they know about this road rage incident so far in their investigation. Well, we know at this time, as you mentioned, it was a road rage incident turned shooting. The victim was found with multiple gunshot wounds to the upper body. Police tell us that victim lost control of his truck and ended up crashing to a parked truck at that home. That's where police found him. We're told officers provided medical attention before EMS arrived and took the man to the hospital in critical condition. They say this started on 36th and Fortuna before again, the victim lost control here by Bellcross and West Commerce. At this time, other information is limited. No suspects have been apprehended at the moment and homicide detectives are conducting their investigation and we'll know more facts as soon as they finish theirs again this is very early on in the scene and this information is is very preliminary police could not give us any information on a possible suspect description or vehicle description but they did say that they do not believe anybody else was hit in the string of gunfire john paul barajas ksap 12 news the Bear County Elections Department opening up its doors today to the media and both political parties. Jackie Kalanen has talked with us before about how she and her staff feel, quote, under attack from conspiracy theorists. So she said today's tour is a first of its kind and it's all about transparency. Our Garrett Berger was there to take a tour himself. He joins us now live. So Garrett, who actually showed up for this tour today? Well, Steve, we saw about 16 people who weren't members in the media between the two tours today, the most recent of which finished up in just a, just within the past hour. Now, Elections Administrator Jackie Callan told us that with, quote, all the disinformation that's out there, she wanted to let both parties come in and kick the tires, so to speak, for the sake of transparency. On the tours of the department, election staff gave descriptions of the various processes, from mailing out ballots to tabulating the returns. And they also answered questions. Democrat and Republican Party chairs both on this afternoon's tour. I have my team um, who's here with me today and we're going to run through uh, just to make sure that everything's set up as we need it as we're moving towards the election. Um, and so we just kind of want to make sure everything's running great and I'm sure it is. So in order to assuage concerns and observations that others have made, I think Jackie is taking the right steps showing that we are interested in having our elections conducted fairly so everybody's vote is counted as they cast it. The local GOP chair told KSAT this open house was something his party had asked for and for the portion of the tour that we were on this afternoon we mostly heard the Republican side asking security related questions. Now in a quick phone conversation with that same party chair as he left today, we had asked him if he was confident in the security of the upcoming election. He told us that there's been a lot of improvement, or that he thinks there's been a lot of improvement compared to previous years. At the Elections Department, I'm Garrett Berger, KSAT 12 News. The San Antonio Police Department now has a new timeline for releasing body cam video. That policy going into effect this past Monday, it cuts the time down 
from 60 days to 30 days. We spoke with a member of Act for SA about the new policy next at six. Why she says 30 days is still too long. To the latest now on the immigration battle and migrants on the move. New reports saying the Venezuelan migrants who were flown from San Antonio to Martha's, Martha's Vineyard, a wealthy island off Massachusetts, were actually told they were headed to Boston. Thousands of migrants have also been bused to other parts of the country, including to Vice President Kamala Harris's home in Washington. President Biden has slammed the Republican governors of Florida, Arizona and Texas, accusing them of, quote, playing politics with human beings. In response, Texas Governor Greg Abbott today said that border communities are begging for relief and the White House refuses to change course. A man who pleaded guilty to distributing meth will spend the next 25 years in prison. He was sentenced today in January of this year. 51 year old Roberto Benitez pleaded guilty to one count of possession with intent to distribute 500 grams or more of meth. Federal investigators arrested him for the crime in 2020 when drugs were found in his home. They also found around $30,000 and a gun. A scary moment for a woman who crashed her vehicle into a wooded area this morning. It happened about 630 today near East Evans and Green Mountain. That's on the northeast side of town. Police say the woman rolled her vehicle several times. Firefighters had to actually cut her out of that vehicle. She was not seriously hurt. It's unclear what caused the woman to crash, but we're told it may have all been over a tire that blew out. We want to bring you the latest on monkeypox here at home. The number of cases is on the rise. As of this afternoon, the city now reporting 53 total cases. However, we are still in the low risk category when it comes to monkeypox infections. Health experts are urging everyone to be aware of the symptoms of the virus, which includes rashes, fever and swollen lymph nodes. Meantime, statewide and nationwide, the number of monkeypox cases are on the rise as well. If you scan this QR code that's on your screen right now, it's going to take you to a map. It shows what that case number looks like in other parts of the country. Registration open for the ninth annual Head for the Cure. The 5K Run Walk raises awareness and funds to fight brain cancer. Case Hut's former news director, Jim Boyle, diagnosed with glioblastoma and passed away. But his legacy lives on. His daughter helped kick off this event outside our KSAT studios in 2014. Since then, it's grown with more families running for the survivors and in remembrance of their loved ones. This year, it all kicks off on the 24th of this month. You can register right now on KSAT.com. Use the promo code KSAT to get $5 off registration. Want to take a live look outside with your traffic authority. And what we see here is something we love at 281 in Grayson. Not a lot of traffic, and what's there is moving along just fine. And you take a look at the radar, nothing locally. We had one little brief shower just north of Sisterdale in Kendall County about 30 minutes ago. You go east of San Antonio, Gonzales County into Lavaca County. Just some highly isolated, brief little pop-up showers. These are not going to be getting in the way of Friday evening plans or Friday night football games. You can see very splash and dash. They don't even last very long in that hour lapse. Most of this close to the coastline and coming to an end, especially as we approach sunset this evening. Otherwise, temperatures right now 93 at Leon Springs, 95 in shirts for the most part. We've got low to mid 90s. Myco 92 and Seguin right now at 95. Mostly clear this evening. Of course, you'll notice an increase in the humidity as well in a light southeasterly breeze. We'll just gradually fall through the 80s, but we have weekend temperatures to talk about if there's any hope for rain and the big blue H when it sets up and how long it's going to sit overhead coming up. Thank you, Adam. The celebration of Mexican Independence Day already being heard at the Pearl in grand style tonight. Viva Dieses at the Pearl featuring different mariachi groups, including Burbank High School students who are excelling in a unique mariachi program. Tiffany Huertas has a sneak peek or rather a sneak listen to what to expect tonight. I'm happy to be able to have this experience um, and to be able to express my culture and uh, 
My Soul That Is In Mariachi Music. In Mariachi Estrellas de Oro will perform tonight at the Pearl. Burbank High School sophomore Juan Sandoval is excited to share the traditional Mexican music. This is my first time performing at the Pearl and it's a great honor to be able to do this. Students part of the mariachi program learn to play instruments, sing, and perform. Mariachi music is about um, expressing your feelings through a voice and an instrument or just body language in general. It's like a connection between like the music and yourself. You get to relate to it. The mariachi program at Burbank High School has been here for more than 10 years. More than 100 students are part of the program and they learn different skills that will help them even after they graduate. They're, they're usually very good at doing presentations and, and uh, job interviews. So after learning how to really express themselves and how to be comfortable with their own voices. Students look forward to sharing their love for mariachi with their family, friends, and community. And I hope that uh, the people who are there watching the performance uh, for all the mariachis there will be able to understand uh, our culture and how we play. Tiffany Huertas, KSAT 12 News. Just beautiful there. Here's a look at the performances going on at the Pearl tonight. They kicked off just a few minutes ago. They include the trio Canteres de Mi Tierra, Las Coronelas, and Mariachi Azteca. Also, there's going to be a guest appearance from Mateo Lopez, the world's youngest mariachi. There's also Loteria games, guitar painting, and a whole lot more. And speaking of music, two teachers from Northeast ISD are honored as Music Teachers of Excellence by the Country Music Association. Johnson High School Band Director Jarrett Lippman and Roan Forest Elementary School Music Teacher Matthew Trevino will receive the award in Nashville next month. You can read more about the teachers and their award right now on KSAT.com. Still ahead on the news at five, a warning for parents, a new recall alert or two being issued for a number of things, as well as a warning about a baby formula you might have. What else you need to look out for next? And TikTok popular among younger people for its silly trends and videos, but now they're using the social media platform for something else. We'll explain. I'm Myra Arthur, and here's what we're working on for the news at 6 o'clock today. It was a movement that was sparking a political party in Texas. Coming up at 6, R.J. Marquez speaks to members of La, La, La Raza Unida, an organization that impacted civil rights for Mexican-Americans more than 50 years ago. They reflect on the past while looking to pass on the torch to future generations. Hispanic heritage celebrations can include food and family. And coming up at six, Jesse Degollado tells us about the founder of Andy Garcia Foods, who made Mexican food quick and easy for families to enjoy all across this country. That and more today on the News at Six. Thank you, Myra. I'll see you then. Well, as the infant formula shortage continues, we have a new warning about a particular product. The FDA cautioning parents not to buy it and not to feed it to their babies. 12 your side's Marilyn Moritz explains why and why some other baby products are being recalled. Parent alert. If you were scrambling to find formula during the shortage and bought this one online, the FDA says do not feed it to your baby. It's Mother's Touch Infant Formula. The FDA says it does not meet nutritional requirements and was not fully tested for harmful bacteria. If you have it, throw it out. Stroller recall. Baby Trend is pulling its Cityscape travel jogger because the parking brake can fail. The gray stroller was sold last year on Amazon. Parents contact Baby Trend for a refund. Bath time danger. Yubaloo is recalling these infant bath seats also sold last year on Amazon. They are a drowning hazard because they don't meet federal standards and can tip over in use. Contact the company and get your money back. And listen to this, 31,000 children's hear muffs are recalled. They're for sound protection, but the alkaline batteries can rupture, causing hearing or burn injuries. They were sold at Sam's Club and other stores. Contact Hearing Lab Technology Lucid Audio for a refund. Finally, September is Baby Safety Month and advocates are urging safe sleep environments. So that means no soft bedding and no stuffed animals in the crib. Nearly 100 infants die each year due to unsafe sleep conditions, most associated with suffocation and soft bedding. A reminder, babies should be put to bed on their backs on a firm, flat surface. Marilyn Moritz, KSAT 12 News. 
TikTok is known for its viral dance videos, but now this app is gaining some ground for something that, well, it's a bit more practical. It's being used as a search engine, especially among young people who are drawn to seeing real people delivering information as opposed to text on a website. Some even call it Google for Gen Z. Google, though, remains the world's most used search engine. However, according to the New York Times, a Google executive says about 40% of young people search TikTok for things like a place to grab lunch. Take a live look outside. Sky 12 over downtown San Antonio. Look at all those clouds up in the sky. Yeah, picturesque, that's for sure. And there's a little bit of vertical development to the clouds, but not enough to really get things going out there around town. As I showed you before, it's mainly east of San Antonio where we have a few brief pop up showers. And that's typical in this kind of a weather pattern where it's a little bit closer to the Gulf Coastline. Summer like weather pattern is going to tape, take shape and really get a grip on our weather for several days in a row. Humid and above average temperatures will be the result and likely a dry pattern too. We also have Tropical Storm Fiona to chat about and its most recent path forecast from the Hurricane Center. Let's start with the radar though. Mention that activity that's out there. Nothing around San Antonio. You go to Gonzales County. We have a few little showers. I mean, it's, yes, heavy in nature, indicated by the red, but they're very localized and very brief in nature. Smiley, you just had one of those showers. Now it is already basically raining itself out. Not much left with that little shower. Elsewhere, you look around El Campo, Wharton, just outside of the case at 12 viewing area, actually a little bit of lightning with that. It's still going to be fairly brief and uh, short lived a little bit in and around Lavaca County right now, just outside of Moulton, just to the west and north up 95. That's where we have a few of those downpours unlikely to actually hit Moulton there, but they're brief and at least we're seeing a little bit this afternoon better than nothing. As I mentioned before, most of it today close to the Gulf Coast within about 80 miles of the Gulf Coast. That's going to be the situation again. I think the next couple of days. Here's the big picture, though. Upper level high over northern Mexico that's settling in and that's going to take control and really not move. It's going to move overhead and then just not budge for several days. We're talking all next week and what that's going to do with that big blue H overhead, just like in the summertime, keep us sunny and dry. All the active weather and moisture is going to be deflected around us. So yeah, big disturbance on the West Coast, big trough there, but we're not going to be able to benefit from that because this just blocks and pushes everything away from us. So we're talking a 10% chance of a shower tomorrow. That's about it. Right, we could see one or two pop up around Bear County, but it's mostly closer to the coastline. If you are going to the beach this weekend, I do think there will be afternoon showers popping up in the area. Astrotropical storm Fiona, max sustained winds at 50 miles per hour, headed westward toward Puerto Rico, Dominican Republic as well, and then likely to turn north near the Bahamas. And once it does, it quits interacting with the islands and land. It could become a category one hurricane by the middle part of next week. And the computer models, the spaghetti plots are becoming really more consistent with showing that typical turn northward parallel to the US East Coast. And right now there's really no concern of it uh, really affecting any part of the US or the East Coast. So something we're watching and we'll keep you updated though. 93. That was our high temperature today. The average being 90. The record, of course, 99 set back in 1954. Our low 75, five degrees above average and quite a contrast to the mornings in the 60s that we had previously. Again, temperatures above average with the big blue H settling overhead. 91 right now, dew point is 66, so it feels like it's three degrees warmer than the air temperature. Uvalde down to 89 along with Fredericksburg. 95 in New Braunfels, 90 Bernie stage. Divine now 97 and Seguin 93. So we'll gradually fall through the 80s tonight. We'll settle at 75 degrees around sunrise tomorrow. By noon, right near 90, then into the mid 90s for a high. Keep in mind the average high is around 90 and we're going to be above that, not just tomorrow, but for the foreseeable future. I mean, Bandera 94, Canyon Lake 93 tomorrow, Floresville 93. Mid 90s this weekend. A lot of nothing but sunshine on Sunday. Of course, you'll notice the humidity southeasterly breeze at 5 to 15. And if that doesn't look like more of a midsummer forecast, I yeah. don't know what does. Just sunshine and mid 90s and dry and dry. Yeah, yep. It's a good night for football. Yeah, absolutely. And New Braunfels seems to be one of the places where there is a great matchup tonight, Greg. 
Yeah. Yeah, here in New Braunfels, in fact, this is the district opener for both of these teams, both Canyon and Champion. And when we come back, we'll give you a preview of the big game and our big game coverage. Also, when we come back, the Aggies have a brand new starting quarterback. Next. Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome live to New Braunfels for the big district opener in 12-5A Division I between the number five Canyon Cougars and the number eight champion Chargers, the big game and our big game coverage. Now, the Cougars are coming into this matchup after starting their 2022 season at 3-0 with wins over Veterans Memorial out of Corpus, 43-42, their 55-29 route of Victoria East, and then last week's big upset of New Braunfels, 35-32 in the Worst Bowl. At the same time, the Chargers are making the trip from Bernie with a 2-1 record with a season-opening win against Laredo United South, 27-22, followed by a lost Eagle Pass. 35-27, then rebounding last week against Canyon Lake, 44-36. From this point on, it all counts towards the playoffs. I feel like we're having a great start. I feel like we're playing fast, we're playing hard. Uh, as our coaches tell us every day, we got something to prove. I feel like we're living up to it and we're going to keep going. We're going to prepare hard like we would for every team. Uh, Bernie's a good team. We're going to play fast, play, play hard, play smart. And we're going to do good. This is a big game, uh, first district game. If we can pull this one off, uh, we'll probably feel like nobody else can beat us, um, especially after working hard, putting in the work, watching film, doing our homework. All right, here's a matchup here in New Bravos at 7 p.m. Steel and Midland Legacy. At, they're on the road in Midland for that game, by the way. Smithson Valley and Wagner Rutledge. Pflugerville Weiss and New Bravos at Unicorn Stadium, also here in New Bravos. McCollum against Alamo Heights at Orem. Brackenridge and Jeff at Alamo. Clark and Marshall Ferris. Stevenson Holmes over Gustafson Stadium. Brandeis and Lee at Comalander. Roosevelt Madison Heroes. Southwest versus Southside Cardinals. South Sand and Southwest Legacy at Titan. Sam Houston at Harlandale. Harlandale Memorial. Laredo United. Clemens at Linhoff. Kennedy and Randolph at Rohawk at Memorial and Antonio. Our big game coverage road trip has Larry and photographer Eddie Latigo headed to Marion for their first stop to see the Bulldogs host Carn City. Then it's down to Lavernia where the Bears meet Navarro. And finally over to Stockdale to catch the Brahmas and Yorktown. And following their 17-14 upset loss to Appalachian State, Aggies head football coach Jimbo Fisher has made a change at quarterback. He's going with LSU transfer Max Johnson instead of Haynes King. That's after King struggled in the loss of the Mountaineers, going just 13-20 for only 97 yards. Don't forget, you can follow your favorite teams on our BGC app tonight, as well as check in on BGC.com, KSA.com, and on Twitter for all your latest scores. And then join us on the night beat for all the highlights and final scores. Live from New Braunfels, Greg Simmons. KSAT 12 Sports. All right, Greg, remember sunscreen is your friend. Just remember that. <laughs> Every <laughs> day. <laughs> Every day. <laughs> we'll be right back. A few stray showers, Gonzales County this afternoon, but otherwise we're going to be clear this evening and that activity dissipating soon. Tomorrow morning we start the day at 75 by the afternoon. We're in the mid 90s. Hondo 94, Stone Oak about 94. You get to Lasoya on the south side about 95, the high temperature. 10% chance of a stray shower tomorrow, so unlikely. Then Sunday, just looking sunny and, of course, noticeable humidity. Southeasterly breeze at 5 to 15 miles per hour and a very summer-like weather pattern next week. Big blue H is overhead. It doesn't mean triple digits, but what you see there, mid-90s, that's average for August. 96 degrees is our average high temperature, and that's where we're going to be next week with nothing but sunshine and a lack of rain. Thank you, Adam, and thank you for watching the News at 5. World News up next. We'll see you back here at 6.